call the meeting to order on Tuesday, November 19th, 2024 for the Middlesex Select Board. Um, welcome one and all who have joined us both in person and virtually and welcome Orca. Mm -hmm. Um, so our first order is to approve the minutes of November 12th, special meeting, action likely, and again that was a special meeting because of the date following our voting day. Is there discussion about the minutes? Alrighty, is there a motion to approve? Okay, Randy moves. Is there a second? Dick seconds. Okay, all those in favor of approving the November 12th minutes, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay, aye. great. And then we are going to approve the agenda as it's been amended. Um, sorry, Sarah, that I never got back to you to say that yes, <laughs> it looked fine. Also, I have another amendment. Oh, you have something to add? Okay. Well, take take away. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Um, all the Welch Park stuff, our town attorney asked that we wait until December 3rd until some details are ironed out. Oh, great. So you crossed that out. Perfect. Okay. Um, and there were just a couple of things that I added, which was um, around the radon mitigation, because I got an email back today um, from someone. And then um, also today we received a survey that they, a VLTC, VLCT wants us to do, but they only want one person in the town, you know, one response from the town. So I just wanted to coordinate that before we did that. Um, okay, so um, it is 5.05 with the, oh wait, I think we need to approve the amended agenda. Is there a motion? Randy moves, second. Vic. Vic seconds. All those in favor of approving the aye. agenda of November 19th, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Aye. Now we are on to the highway update, reviewing post-flood road construction action possible. Um, reviewing and revising a policy for culverts in the town's right-of-way action possible. I don't see the revision. Sarah, did we print that out? Uh, Zara, is Zara there? Yeah, hi, Zara. Uh, yeah, hi, I just re uh, assumed, um, push that until December 3rd as well. Okay. I have a road committee meeting this Thursday, so be okay. just the way I feel right now. Perfect, that's fine. Um, so, so then we'll talk about the highway update from Eric, and then Zara, if you want to add a little bit about the drone, that would be great. Okay. Yep, so, sure. Eric. Yep. Yeah, not much to add since last week. Um, the international should be back Thursday, and Thursday they're going to start doing the guardrails. Who's they? Uh, well, Dirt. it's yeah, but it's actually contracted out to uh, Lafayette. Okay. Contract out of Lafayette. Oh, the guardrail? Yep. Where's the guardrail? Uh, in different spots, Old Brook oh. and Brook Road. Okay. Pretty much wherever there's a big steep bank now. Okay. And the paving on Shady Road? Tuesday. Of uh, next week? Yep. Right before Thanksgiving. Just yep. in time for all the family guests. Yep. To avoid potholes. <laughs> Just in time for the rain. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, and um, yes, Vic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to ask a question. Sure. And um, I got approached tonight. Mm -hmm. I actually got stopped. But the culvert that is over um, just down East Hill below. Um, Ingrid's house before you get to uh, Slaughterhouse Road or Car Cemetery? The one right next to Car Cemetery. No, the one back up, the big one. The big, big culvert, culvert that washed out and we put, we put. Uh, so the squash culvert that they put in. Right, and we put uh, a temporary bunch of blocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer. Who. So who says where that culvert uh, and at what depth that culvert goes? Is, is there any, do you do that or does the state set it up? I think the state said how to, how to set it up. They gave them an elevation? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm pretty sure I set it right on the hydraulic study. Okay. Yep. Because, you know, you know, the issue is, and I agree with the guy, mm -hmm. but the issue is that it goes down six feet and actually the, inlet end should be set down because it's not even in the old bed. Remember it kind of filled in there? Mm -hmm. 
And then the, the downstream side, if the water comes up two feet, it's going to go into the road and go down to that other culvert that's buried up. Yeah. Two, two and a half feet. Yeah. So the question was that we had those, we had those, con those concrete blocks there. Mm -hmm. Now, those belong to the guy, they do? They belong to us, they went back to the shop. They I did? Had, I had a big pile of them there. Actually, I use them. Those did? Yeah. Okay. I actually use them for the salt okay. shed to make it work right. bigger. No, I just think that uh, maybe that should be built up there on the you're lower. You're talking on, on, the, on the inlet side, but on the lower side of the inlet side. Right. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. For like, like a wall. Yeah. There's a telephone pole there, but the mm -hmm. telephone pole is hooked to nothing. Right. Yep. And then there's another pole mm -hmm. just a little bit down that holds that. Right. <laughs> And that's that was their suggestion, or that was their yeah. thing. So, it's probably something we could do. I mean, we have blocks. You do have them. Okay. But hey, can I just interrupt for a second? I'm getting a little blowback by someone who wants to attend this meeting by Zoom, and they don't want to identify themselves. And that's fine unless they want to talk. Okay. If they want to talk, they have to identify themselves. Okay, that's fine. They can identify, but just remember, people can get bombed. Meetings can get bombed with stuff like that. What well, do you think, Elias? I mean, they could scream nasty things at us. We can just kick them out if they start to do that. Okay. 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 Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other things that you want to share about the road? No, like I said, nothing's, not much has changed since last Tuesday. So. Okay. Um, I did want to share with you guys, I can't do it online, but um, the first EWP project from our last year's funding mm -hmm. on Culver Hill Road, that's what they did for somebody's driveway. That was one of the projects that was, you can pass it down if you guys want to see it. It looks nice, as Sarah called it, an aqueduct. <laughs> A Roman that? aqueduct. That was on Culver Hill? Yeah, on Culver Hill, yeah. Her driveway was at risk of getting separated from the below road. That's just right? Yeah, just yes. below me, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know yeah. what you're They did a nice job. Yeah, actually, I think I went and spoke to her. Oh, maybe, yeah, Murphy. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's right, yeah. You want to see it? Could I? Yep. Um, so, anyway, it looked like a, a nice job. That was Jason, right? Jason Merrill? Must be somebody he's contracted with. Oh, I don't know who did it. I think he's the, well, I think he's the person we contracted with for the EWP. Oh, okay. So. Um, hey, there's a dog. That's my talk. Um, okay, so any other questions for the highway folks? So Zara, do you want to tell us about the what's going on on Brook Road? And actually, there is something else I want to add after you do that, Zara. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so you're talking about the, the LIDAR flight? Yeah. Um, so that is um, something that the Road Committee Team Future was able to put together with um, in conjunction with UVM and the state. Um, we received a $7,000 grant um, from UVM so that we could um, see the difference in the brook over the last uh, two years. The last one that was done was in 2023 um, or, yeah, something, a few years ago before the two floods. Yeah, so this is going to give us an idea of what the brook has done over the last two events and um, then possibilities of how we can counteract it, how we can work with the state to um, help our homeowners along those roads. Nice. And so what, what are they going to do with this information once it's gathered? You know? So they're, what, they're going to be comparing it um, against the other um, information and then looking at the depth and the width um, and just the areas that are the most vulnerable and I'd have to have a bigger conversation with Mike Klein this Thursday, kind of about what the results and what it what it's going to mean for the town. Okay. Um, so regarding, ew, yuck, the wow. fly, the fly that can barely move. Um, I sent that email, Eric. I'm not sure if you're I able to it. attend. Oh, I should be able to. Okay, it's so. 5th, right? Yeah, it was December 4th, 4th. at 530. Um, I invited Mike. Zara thought she might be able to come. It's called the Flood Resilience Roundtable for Towns in the Winooski Watershed. And it's the Vermont State Recovery Office um, inviting one to two or 
so it would be three potential members of our community to attend that. Um, and I, since um, Zara's on the select board, I think it's fine to add the third person. And then you and Mike, I think, would be good people. Eric, if you can do that. Yep. Um, and there's pizza, just so you know. It's a, So it's like a 5.30 to 8.30 thing. There's meal provided. That's why I'm able to go. Okay, good. <laughs> Free food, right. Okay, and then there's another thing which I thought I would try to attend. I think it's tomorrow, um, which is crew. Were you thinking about attending that there? Um, Liz invited the me to go to that. And then you you posted it on Facebook, I think. Or not Facebook, on Front Porch Forum. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, actually, L. O'Casey um, posted oh, about the the Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, yeah. I do. I have two different Zoom meetings. There was some other call to action thing that I had signed up to previously, but um, okay. yeah, I can do the crew one instead. Yeah, I, I don't mean to say you have to do it, Zara, but it would be nice if one of us from Middlesex came. Um, I think it's tomorrow, isn't it? At six. It's like an hour. Yeah. So I'm going to try to attend as well. Um, but that's basically just to talk about, again, um, how communities can um, rally, you know, immediately after a disaster. Um, you know, so it sort of falls in line with emergency management stuff as well. But since CREW, if you're all not familiar with it, they're the um, long-term recovery group for Waterbury, Middlesex, Duxbury, and Baston, maybe. Um, and they basically help out in the immediate, right after a disaster, checking on people, helping mucking out stuff, and then long-term stuff. So there's some case managers that are working with people who are still recovering from the 2023 and 2024 flood. OK, so um, did you register for that yet? The one you sent me? Yeah. No. OK, would you? I will do that. Will you do that? OK. Uh, Mike has registered. Yeah, okay. I, I just wrote it down. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. All right. Monthly meeting with representatives from, we are so ahead of time. Were we yeah, waiting Jeff's, for Jeff Jeff's to come? Here, yeah. Okay, so maybe what we can do is jump to other business because the next thing is also the um, yeah. the Montpelier Fire Department. And then we can't forget the Middlesex bandstand that we forgot last week. Yes, Zara. Do you want a quick FEMA update? Oh, sure. Yep, that would be great. Uh, so we met with um, our reps today. Uh, Christina, who has taken over for Dirk, uh, seems to be doing a pretty good job. She sent us over paperwork to wrap up Brook Road, which is $155,624. And she also wrapped up East Hill Road, which is $754,759.09. That was what, East Hill? So, yes. Wow, that'd East be awesome. Hill. This is, again, 2023, 4720 things that they're, that they're going through. So she got those two done um, in a week. Um, I And she's after Center uh, Road, which is just under 800000 next. Um, so if she can do two a week. We'll be rich by December 31st. <laughs> Probably. Oh, yeah. right. What's the, what's Senator Road? How much is that? Is that... 800 and. Uh, Brook Road was $155, 624. 155,624. East Hill was 754,759 and nine cents. Yeah, I was asking about Senator Road. Senator Road. Center would be seven hundred and ninety-one thousand nine hundred and twenty-five dollars and sixteen cents. All righty, thank you, Zara, for doing that, and thank you, Eric, for working with Zara on that. And thank you, Christine. Is that you said her name was? Uh, Christina. Yeah. Christina. Great. Great. All right. So we're still waiting for Jeff. Um, so it looks like under correspondence, L.O. Casey is resigning from the Planning Commission. Action likely. Was there a little letter that she wrote, uh, Sarah? I'm sorry. No, all I have is from uh, Sandy Levine saying that L has resigned and to let the select board know. And also, therefore, you'll have to uh, post an opening to okay. be appointed by the select board. All righty. Well, thank you, L, for your service to the planning 
Commission, and we're sorry to see you go. Um, so, Sarah, we don't have to move or anything, do we? No. Yeah. Um, it says action likely. So are we moving that we post, post a job yes. opening? Correct. Okay. Is there a motion for that? Okay, Randy moves. Oh. Zara seconds for po that Sarah will post a job opening for a volunteer job opening position. for the Planning Commission. Position. Position, right. Position. Thank you, Vic, for the Planning Commission. All right. And thank you for your service, Al. Okay. Radon mitigation in the town's office. So um, following the um, unsuccessful bond vote, um, I just went ahead and reached out to a couple places. I got a email back from a guy who's given me sort of a link to identify people in the in our zip code area that can do radon mitigation services. Um, and so um, I think, I guess I don't really, I don't think it's, I don't know what the cost is going to be. Um, my, my initial thing was like 8,000 or something like that. So I'm not sure if we need to like get several quotes. Like, what do you guys think we should do for for that? Um, have a couple people come. I know it's hard to find these people in the first place, and I just kind of like to get it done. Um, but I also have no idea how much this kind of thing costs. So maybe it makes sense to at least get two people to come and give yeah. something. Do we have do we have any requirements? Not for that so small it's amount. Under probably. a certain amount of money, and yeah. I think that falls under a certain amount of money. Yeah. We don't have to do RFPs. Okay. And it's not being paid for by federal dollars. Right. So you can just do a best practice or we can do a best practice. Yes. Yeah. Make a few calls, bring them in. Okay, great. And Sarah, you you mentioned like, oh, my friend's brother in law or something like that does radar. Yeah, boyfriend. I'll, uh, yeah, so if you want to reach out to that person, okay. but maybe tell me who it is, because the list, there's quite a number of people in the central Vermont area that might be able to do it, and maybe he's or she okay. is one of them. Um, so um, so if it's okay with the board, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, does anyone have any objections to that, or want to do that instead, like they're so eager to, <laughs> to do this? Randy's smiling. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to move on that, right? No. Okay. Hey, thanks. Um, you're welcome. Um, and then this municipal, we're going to be out of here in no time. <laughs> this municipal survey, um, I think came from the Vermont League, the city, VLTC. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. So um, your, your input will guide us um, to, it says here, uh, please help VLTC's upcoming operations related programs and legislative advocacy efforts by answering a set of questions about your municipality's situation, concerns, and needs on a few key topics. Your answers to some of this will be crucial data for the state legislators to review in the 2025 session when many bills could have significant impact on our members. Your other answers will inform new member-focused programs and services that we will introduce in the coming months. Question topics include local option taxes, pilot funds, recent statutory changes involving housing and Act 250, and regionalization of services. So I can't get into the survey, and I don't think we all want to do the survey together. Um, but I think what we should do is, you know, maybe assign a board member and Sarah to do the survey together. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Sure. Okay. So, so yep. I, I looked at the um, I looked at the survey. Oh, you did go in. And, yeah. Okay. And I can you can save it and email it to others. Oh, you can. Yes. Okay. So I think if you if you guys are amenable, as long as you don't talk among yourselves, we can send it to you guys. Okay. And then you can all just respond. It like respond to in your in a in a language in the in respond, the email. Respond respond to me in the email because they don't what they don't what the VLC doesn't want is a bunch of town officials yes chiming in yes so gotcha. if you look through it and say these are the things that are important to me all right read through the questions on the survey okay that's it so I can just all right so the deadline for that is soon December 6 so Sarah if you want to pass that on to us and whoever responds let's you know let's say um, because Sarah will want to fill out the survey um, the date is What's Monday? Uh, yeah, December. So by Monday, if we can get their answers to Sarah, that would be great. So it's the 25th. Uh, to the 2nd. Is oh, that Monday? 
Yeah, because you said this, it's the December 6th. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, so after Thanksgiving. So just send it to us, and we'll get it to you by Monday the 2nd. Is everyone okay with that? All righty. Um, any other matters that come before the board? Was there something else there? You said? No, we were taking this off. Okay. Um, just to give you guys a heads up on the Welch Park thing, it looks like all the documents are ready. There's just a little bit of some minor tweaks that they have to make, but it's ready to go. Okay. So that's, and if they're not ready by December 3rd, if you just approve the transfer of, the, of what the deeds are then, and designate Liz to sign it, then you're good to go. Okay. Um, and I guess I'll also tell you all that um, that we met. So Sandy, um, Dave, and I met with. Um, oh, this is actually something I didn't put it on the agenda. Can I talk about it? It's not, there's no action. Yeah. But anyway, we met to talk about sort of like buttoning up some of the stuff that uh, VIA has done for us, so that we have the documents that we paid for. Um, and um, and one thing that um, that. And then I had a meeting with someone in um, Moortown, who's a friend of mine and also on the select board in Moortown, because they're on the same trajectory as we are for doing a town hall renovation. And they also have not gotten any funding. So it's just a hard time for funding. But what we did talk about is other things, which included things like all the extra work that the town clerk has to do and that you know, um, Paula Otenti had sent an email to Sarah saying like, oh, here's like a thing we could sign up for, for figuring out how to get grants and things. And Sarah's like, I can't take on any more things, right? So I think that we should be thinking, maybe not this budget year, but for next budget year, um, is to consider a town administrator and potentially sharing that with another town, like Moortown, for example. Someone who can help us with grants and paperwork and things that Sarah has been doing in her role as town clerk, but really not, right? She's been acting like a town administrator in, in many ways. Um, she is our select board assistant, so she's also a lot of the stuff that she's doing is on an assistant level. But I'd like us all to, um, and actually have that to be, Sarah, on our list of goals. I just think it's getting to a, not quite a boiling point, but it's coming close, and I think that um, it's reasonable to consider this option for this town, given our size and the amount of stuff that has to go on in our town. It's reasonable to think about it as having our own town administrator, and it's reasonable to think about potentially sharing um, a position. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, yep. Excuse me. Yep. When you say uh, not this budget year, do you mean the... Uh, uh, starting January, uh, July uh, 2025 or 2026? No, like 26. I mean, we'd have to start talking about it today mm -hmm. is basically what it boils down to, which we could. Good. We could talk about it starting today and having it for be July. Um, there, that isn't such a bad idea um, because, um, because you, so, and Sarah, not Sarah, Susan Clark could explain this better. There's a very big difference between a town administrator and a town manager in terms of like Vermont statute. A town administrator, you know, we still as a select board have a role. If you had a town manager, it's just sort of a, like a, what do you call it? It doesn't make any decisions when you have a town manager. Um, so, and, and the town clerk does just town clerk duties, right? Like um, filings and dog licenses and things like that. Um, and so the, we're not, we don't need a town manager, but what we could potentially consider is a town administrator. Callis has Kari Bradley as their town administrator. Um, and, and what that, um, what that might mean in terms of helping support the work that we're doing now. And that is really overworked, right? Um, and you know, it would also potentially give somebody like Eric more opportunities to be doing the work he's really good at, like roads and things like that, and less of the, the paperwork and all of that that has to that has to happen. Yes, sir. 
I think it's a great idea, and I think based on what Sarah's timeline is, um, I think we do need to be talking about it for sooner than more, rather than later. I mean, uh -huh. it would stink to lose our town clerk and then figure okay. out we've got two people and nobody to train. Yeah. Okay, so then I think we should probably have a day that we set aside to um, to talk about that. And the third? Sorry? The third? Of December. Yeah, we're doing everything else on the third. Let's do that. Yeah, and I think it would be also helpful if, and I can do this, is like get in touch with an actual town administrator to find out what their duties are. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so that we have a sense, and Sarah, and I think Susan Clark would be very helpful as well. Um, so, okay, thanks, and welcome. Um, Sorry, I to the fire. Was on the no, it is, and and we're on the fast track. We're on the fast track. We're done with the meeting, except for you. You were talking about roads. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, we just <laughs> talked about them last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so now, um, so Sarah, do you mind putting that on the December 3rd agenda? I got it. I'm not going to be there the week after that, or the next meeting after that, December 12th. Okay. Do y'all want to talk behind my back? Perfect. <laughs> no, we don't want to talk. Do okay. December 17th. Okay, so welcome, Jeff, Thanks. for the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department budget presentation. Well, we're going to do the meeting first. Oh, or... oh yeah, sorry. Yep. The monthly yeah. meeting. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so we're up to 96 calls. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. And we've got six more weeks to go uh, before the end of the year. So um, we're going to, I'm fully confident we'll knock through 100. Mm -hmm. We'll see how much past that we go, but I think we'll go a ways past that. <clears throat> what, what does that compare to last year? I did not look that up, but it was lower. I think it was like mid 80s. Yeah, it was mid to late, mid to high 80s. Yeah. Um, so we had nine calls this last period. Three of those were mutual aid out. We had no mutual aid in. Um, max responders was eight, min responders was three, and our average up to 5.66. So we dropped down a little bit last month at 475, and now we're up to 5.66. <coughs> so we're seeing a lot more responders coming to the calls. Engine one was out six times, engine six was out zero times. I was away for three weeks, that might contribute to that a little bit. Uh, tanker one was out three times, rescue was out twice, truck 14 not out, and one POV response. Uh, 89, car on a roof. Uh, that was on the 29th and 30th. Was on River Road in Moortown, uh, oil mal or furnace malfunction. That's in our catch area of Moortown. Then Jonesbrook Road was an unpermitted burn. <clears throat> we started responding, but Moortown K1, their chief, uh, canceled us. He responded there and, uh, as he's the fire warden. As well, Moortown. yeah. Um, tisk. Pardon? He said tisk, tisk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Upper Sunnybrook was a false alarm carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide detector. 89 again, uh, car under the ledges. <clears throat> the initial call came through as a Montpelier call. When, when they zeroed down on it on the maps more, they found it was in Middlesex. So I'm not counting that as a mutual aid in because they were there, but it was their call first until they found out, oh, it's in Middlesex. Um, we got called to Duxbury for a structure fire. Um, that's apparently in the part of Waitsfields catch basin of Duxbury. I thought Waterbury did the whole thing, but apparently not. Yeah, it was collected by the high school. Um, <clears throat> so there were quite a few departments at that one. Um, then we have a host of uh, calls on Route 2 at the Middlesex Montpelier line. First was structure fire, then we had a call for a structure fire with Kindle, which turned out being just a fire in the fire ring of the former structure. And then a what was a fast squad that turned call turned into fire call because they didn't have any patient contact and only did uh, traffic control for the three agencies that were there tying up the one lane of the road. Uh, <clears throat> we had a total of 18 fast squad calls. Two, two that's wrong. Two were um, 16 were medical calls only. 
two were um, accidents. As far as training, we did pump operations on both pumpers. Um, that went well, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, repairs, none. Hey. Uh, purchase uh, pager. Yeah. So um, things seem to be going a lot better in the fire department. There are people hanging out around the station more. Cleaning. It's cleaning up. They were cleaning today when I went to get the numbers. Uh, some folks were going to be playing cornhole. Somebody donated a cornhole nice. game set. So uh, we're, we're oh, more people are being active, engaging, using. Nice. The members are getting together. Which is good. any questions? What is this the old? Yes, it is. Would you like it? <laughs> it's got a big black Chevy in it. Yeah. No, I just I saw it was up here and it's been rolled. Well, yeah. Huh? Yeah, we had to move it. Why? Nobody sees the it. The neighbors. Though. Oh. Okay. Actually, uh, I got a phone call about it tonight that I'm gonna re reply to. Let's make a nice camper. Make a good tool hauler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> the engine runs great. Generator runs good too. And it's hooked up to the gas tank, so and you can start it from inside. Anyway. What are you taking offers or do you have an asking for us? Yes. Both. Yeah? Yeah. Fifty-eight for you today. Oh. Yeah, no, no, I was just curious. My old soul is this week. Okay. Appreciate it. We're willing to talk any price, really. You said 5 8? Yeah. Start point. We want trading boats. Dual batteries. There you go. Thank you. Um, this is sort of related to fire. Mm -hmm. um, Samantha Bowden, is um, Steve there by any chance? I don't know if she's actually listening. He, he just went outside. Oh, I can okay. grab him. Um, yeah, I just wanted to m mention something about emergency management and rekindling that. <laughs> rekindling it. That's, 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 that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, great play on words. Yeah. And as a, an example of when how many fire departments we get in in mutual aid while we're waiting, um, there's a fire in Shelburne, I think it's out by now, but they've got, I believe it's seven departments. Mm -hmm. So you got a boatload of professional departments up there and they've got seven departments on a house fire. Mm -hmm. So wow. when we call in five, six, seven departments yeah. that are all volunteer except for Montpelier, you know, you it's on. Up? Oh, hey, hey, Steve. Oh, oh. Um, how's it going? Hey, good. Um, so I wanted to just mention that um, one thing that I would like to um, start to do, especially now that the weather's going to start to turn a little bit, um, is to um, meet together as an emergency management group um, and get us signed up with um, VT Alert. Um, the, the process is a lot easier now. I don't know if any of you remember, I, don't, I think I was the only one on the board at this point, maybe, um, maybe uh, uh, whatever his name was, the other guy, Peter. Peter, <laughs> it's not here. A long time ago, it was a big process, right? Like they'd have to come and train you and everything, but now they just give you the tools to just do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's just sort of a, you know, we can all sit together and learn how to do it and decide who's going to be the person that would um, be able to uh, send out an alert. So like Eric, right? Eric would be the person that would say, tree down on Brook Road, seek alternate route, right? That kind of thing. <laughs> um, and maybe one person from the select board. So, um, so Steve, I would like us to, um, to convene, potentially if we could meet in early December, I think that would be really good um, as an emergency management um, committee and meet at the fire station and just bang this out um if you are okay um if you
Yes, yeah, uh, we can de we can definitely do that. So I'm set up on VT alerts already, um, and I have a group established. And the only thing I wanted to talk to ever, the group about, like uh, who we wanted to get permission to do what. So right now, I can kind of send out a message to do like this for any type of emergency in Middlesex. Um, but I think it would make more sense, especially for road related issues, to have Eric on that. Um, yeah. cause like I'm not usually in the town and he's driving, you know, on the road, the roads every day, or he's at least in town every day. You know what I mean? So I think he'd have more firsthand ability to know when roads are closed or trees down or something like that. Perfect. So if you can find whatever, whenever we were supposed to meet, I know we didn't meet the last couple times. Um, but it's like yeah. whatever day it was a Monday, whatever, if you can find one that you think, uh, we could all do before the holidays, Maybe in early December, the first two weeks, that would be helpful. I think we, I think we were doing the third Monday, um, but okay. we could do like the first Monday in December. Yeah, that maybe works that's, for yeah, that might be good. Um, so anyway, that's something that I'd like to just get in, um, instituted um, as soon as possible. Okay. Great, thanks. No problem. Okay, so now the budget. Thank you for your service and for the service of your team members. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, let's see. Does anybody want questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Radio dispatch, that's not confirmed, but you're guessing? Yeah, that's, that's an educated guess. Mm -hmm. Pretty much keeping stuff the same, more or less, with a few little increases. Yeah. Try to keep it as minimal as possible. Yeah. Um, why is the gas so low? Is it that we aren't actually, are we like not charging it to the right account or something? Or are we just No, um, we, well, really it, it comes out of, it comes out of the, uh, the road because we fill them up at the station. That's what I mean. Yeah. So I mean, and it's hard to, I mean, I write down the gallons that we use, um, but to differentiate it out, I, mean, I suppose I probably could. But we don't really fill the trucks up that often. Okay. I mean, we just don't. I don't know. I mean, I think we've only filled them up. I don't think it's even monthly. But the no. other, the other flip side is the electricity up at station two, that the, the town, the road department has a bay we pay for that electricity so that it's a kind of a, a wash of diesel for electric and we we don't have a gas vehicle anymore because it's sitting out there right because we were buying gas because we obviously don't have gas pumps but we still have to buy gas for our small engines okay That's or the regular or if we're out and and at a call and we're not near the station or the shop and we have to get fuel because of running the pump for so many hours and we can still right. the gas station and buy it. So what I don't see on here is a new heating system. <laughs> and so um, I did ask, that was another thing I meant to mention, I asked Lowry for the, uh, on the energy committee to s start working on um, bringing in some people to do this heating system because this is pretty bad, this system here. Um, so to do what we talked about last time, which is like a more energy efficient one or just a replacement one and, um, to get some quotes for that. So he's starting that process. Um, he could do the same, they could do the same thing for the fire department. Yeah. Do you, do you know how that, uh, whole, um, when they went down and checked everything out and did the assessment? Yeah. Do you know how that came out? I have not seen it. Oh, you haven't seen the assessment? Okay, I do have it, yes. Um, and so I'll send that over to you. I think right after this meeting, did did I did we not share that we didn't get MERP? We got no money from the Municipal Energy Resilience um, Program. South Burlington did. They were the oh. one town that has not a low, it, everyone was lowest income or lowest energy burden, uh, meaning, I'm sorry, highest energy burden towns. And there were two towns that had lowest energy burden. One of them was South Burlington. So they they got something like sixty thousand. But Worcester got some money, and um, 
Barry got some money, Barry City probably, I think it was, um, in central Vermont. And there was one other one. Oh, Marshfield also got some, or Plainfield, or rather Plainfield did. Um, so for a heating system, I mean, I think that if you guys really think it's going to fall apart this year, we should put the in the budget. Um, it's the, the last time we had it worked on, the, the tax recommendation was that we don't invest any more sizable money. In it. I mean, maintenance is one thing. Um, I'm really reluctant to say that we haven't had any issues because that's a sure guarantee we will. Yeah. But um, that's kind of where we're we're sitting. I believe the last estimate, and this is a couple of years ago, so it's probably yeah. not worth the paper that it's written on now, was somewhere around 14,000. Yeah. Is it a propane boiler? It's a propane on demand yeah. Yeah. boiler that runs, it, it's, we have um, radiant floor heat throughout yeah. the whole system. Okay. Um, so there's the one thought of you replace just the, the boiler yeah. unit itself or to have some reserve for when the bay doors open in the middle of winter and you need to heat up that slab, um, that you have a hot water tank that doesn't run except it senses it needs hot water and then the, uh, the furnace will come on and fill that and then you have a, a bank of some hot water. Um, for whatever reason, that was not put in when they put the original system in. Normally when those kind of systems are put in there is a essentially what I would call a battery storage um, for them but all right I'm going to forward this to you right now I'll, I'll forward it to both of you um, there's one for um, the town hall as well as the fire station so do you want the energy committee just to do the same thing that they're doing for here, is just have someone come in and maybe do a quote and see what we have? Okay. Um, there may be some incentives too if there's some like high efficiency propane boilers or something that mm -hmm. efficiency Vermont we can get. There's also, I got an email from Sam Lash that said um, that there are some like very low interest loans that the state is giving for upgrading heating systems. I'm not sure we'd need a loan, but that's an option um, that we could pursue if we felt like this wasn't a year that we could really have wanted to add it to our budget, but could do it as like a loan. Could, wasn't, wasn't this put on, wasn't the heating system put on the capital uh, plan? Uh, or were we just waiting to hear back from we might have been waiting the survey? To hear, and, yeah. I don't know. Do you have that, um, Elias? I'm not seeing it from a quick look. It must be on the somewhere on the capital planning bit. Uh, I, don't know. I don't recall. Okay. Anything on that? On a somewhat related note, can they look at the uh, town garage too for the mm -hmm. heating system? Do yeah. both? Because I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last either. Yeah. That one's bad. Yeah. yeah. Those. Those. Let's pop quite a bit. Okay. All right. So is there, and you'll have some more updated stuff potentially, like the, uh, the um, oh, because this is the debt service. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't have those were just, okay. Anyone have any questions about their budget or concerns? Hopes and dreams? <laughs> yes, Zara. I'm just thinking that when we are talking about uh, what we're going to do about administrator, that we should also have a larger conversation about the town hall as it is, where it is, and what we're going to, what we're going to, you know, how we're going to pivot with that, and also kind of the state of uh, the town, um, you know, where Eric lives, and and then that fire station in, in front of it. That's kind of following the job. The well, job garage. oh, yeah, yeah. right. So um, I will also add that in the meeting that I had with BIA and, and Sandy and Dave, that we talked about reconvening in January um, and creating, you know, offering it out to the public and say, you know, let's get a fresh new 
you know, set of eyes on the table and come up with, um, you know, have some sort of public something or other to consider all the options on the table, right? The options may be selling this building. They may be moving to a room at Rumney and renting space or not renting space. It may be, you know, building, getting a $5 million bond for a new town garage and combining them, right? So I think all things are on the table at this point. And, um, but this building still needs to get the radon taken care of and it needs to get a heating system regardless, well, right? So and it has to yep. it has to house everybody for the foreseeable future. Yeah, it has to house people for the foreseeable future. So exactly. You can accommodate in different situations. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so any and all are welcome when we have that meeting. <laughs> uh, okay. So any other questions about the fire station budget? Um, all righty, so we will plug these numbers, I guess, into the bigger budget. We have one more budget request that we forgot last week, which was the um, budget request for the Middlesex Bandstand Committee. Um, and the it says here, um, it's under sponsorship of the Middlesex Historical Society uh, for the 2025 season. Um, they have enthusiastically established support of the bandstand. The town funds applied to this past summer 2024 season amounted to 1500 At the town's invitation, the MBC attended the recent October 15th public meeting to request funds for the 2025 season. We increased the annual request to 2000 The response was positive. The experience of the summer 2024 season highlighted by repeated rains that forced weekly performances indoors resulted in reduced attendance and diminished donations that informs our increased request. This letter is intended to satisfy the instructions for the Middlesex Select Board to form no, the Middlesex, yeah, Select Board to formally request in writing, I think they meant to say the Middlesex Bandstand Committee, to formally request in writing the amount of 2,000 for general support of the 2025 summer series. And that's signed by Linda Belbernier, Emily Bodecker, Paula Bofa, and Danielle Mishkit, and Ron Sweet. So, um, so basically, we don't make any decisions right now. We just say this is going to be put into the budget in the big spreadsheet. And then we, when we go and do our budget review, we will um, revisit it as we're looking at our overall budget um, numbers. So I think, by golly, unless there are other matters that come before the board, we might just be done. Oh. Are there any other matters that come before the board? All righty, going once, going twice. Um, I officially end this meeting at 6, 5.50. Not 6.50, 5.50. And thank you all for coming. Woo!